Hey, what's up guys? John here. New York Community Bank Corp Bank just lost 45% of their stock value in the matter of hours. Regional banks under pressure as New York Community Bank sells off big. New York Community Bank Corp stopped on 41%. 75% is how much their dividend was just cut. When you start to look at this massive crisis that we're walking into in the U.S. banking system, you'll see things very, very clearly that we're walking into a new America. March of 2023, when Silicon Valley Bank fell, it rocked the world. Everybody was talking about it. Then Signature Bank fell. Then First Republic. Then PacWest getting acquired by Bank of California. You had one merger after the next. But now when you start to see all these new guidelines introduced through the FDIC, you're gonna see things very, very clearly that we're walking into a wave of mergers and a massive change for America's banking system. Please hit the like button, hit the like button. YouTube will share this content to educate other people about what's going on in America's economy. And if you'd like to fix your credit, we'd love to help you at my company, greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, or any negative item on your credit report, go to greatcreditfast.com. Click the link in the description just below this video, schedule a free strategy session for tomorrow, for Thursday. Take a look at this. So regional banks' stocks fall after New York Community Bank Corp cut dividend and post loss. New York Community Bank Corp stock drops 45%. Now, when you hear, you know, the story of these, uh, these banks issuing, you know, these dividend cuts and kind of pulling back you know, issuing these big losses, you have to ask yourself, are we going to see a Fed pivot? And if we do, could this be a sign of relief for these regional banks? Well, everybody is banking on a Fed pivot, except for me, because I don't think it's likely going to happen. A lot of people have been talking about a January 2023 Fed pivot. You know, it's been 14 months or 13 months. We've yet to see any pivot. And now they're coming out. Federal Reserve expected to hold rates steady as consumers' confidence you know, increases, right? Fed, Jerome Powell is set to speak 2.30 today. Federal Reserve meets Wednesday. Here's what to expect. Federal Reserve drone power to hold U.S. rates in effort to fight inflation. You start to see that we're likely not going to see a Fed pivot. And so what is that going to mean? These unrealized losses are soon going to be realized due to this new Basel III endgame uh, re legislation that's coming in. right? And so when you look at this, it says New York Community Bank Corp stock crushed on surprise loss. It's really not much of a surprise because they mentioned it right here. Regulators proposed a higher capital requirement for such banks last summer in reaction to the failure of Signature, Silicon Valley Bank, and First Republic. And this is all banks with $100 billion in assets. So now when you look at this, proposed rules for strengthening capital requirements for large banks, it sounds, it's such a good headline. A lot of people love that. You know, strengthen banks. Who doesn't want to strengthen banks where we all have our money? But when you look at it, a little bit more closely, you start to see things a little bit different than they appear. So banking and non-banking industries voice concern over Basel III endgame proposal to potentially, sig potentially significant negative impact on consumers. This came out eight days ago. On September 18, 2023, the Federal Reserve, FDIC, and the Office of Controller of the Currency jointly published a sought and sought comments on a proposal to implement new standardized capital requirements that would, among other things, increase capital requirements for banks with 100 billion or more in total assets. So this is how this plays out. You have these top banks here, which JP Morgan Chase, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, Citigroup, US Bank Corp, Goldman Sachs, and PNC. If you add up all of these together, you will come up to a total of 10.378 billion. So I've taken the first, four banks listed, which are here, and then I've taken these three banks here, added those up, and it comes up to 10.378 billion. So essentially, it is a $6 billion fee that is now paid by the regional banks. And so you just pay very, very close attention to how regional banks operate. 80% of all commercial loans on all property here in America is held by regionals, 80%. And you look at these significant markdowns on these loans, there's massive, massive losses they now have to realize. It's an issue. Consumer deposits falling, interest rates rising, all of which is a very, very, very big problem for these regional banks. What I believe we're going to be walking into over the next couple of years is a wave of mergers to where we're going to go from a situation where there's thousands of banks to hundreds or maybe even a hundred or maybe even less than that. And there's going to be a, a large consolidation of banks. Uh, being pushed together, which is going to be a problem for America. Because when you have a situation, a scenario where there's only a handful of banks, those banks are able to issue regulations, restrictions, they're able to, you know, bring through anything because they essentially have a mo monopoly. They work together, right? It it's a big problem. I mean, look at this. 
It's just, it's unbelievable. They say right here, while the three federal banking agencies cite the need to increase the strength and resilience of the banking system, banking and non-banking trade groups have pointed to a significant negative impacts on U.S. consumers if the proposal is enacted largely proposed in its white paper published January 14th, 2024. The Consumer Banking Association noted potential lifelong negative impacts to consumers' financial health with low and moderate income consumers, disabled consumers, black and Hispanic consumers, bearing the brunt of the impact with excessive capital mandates that apply only to banking organizations comes with inevitable trickle down effects, passing along the increase in cost of loans and other financial products onto the consumer faced with the increase in cost, consumers may be more likely to turn to non-bank and oftentimes less regulated lenders and products for their credit needs, which in turn could lead to predatory lending practices and difficulty building credit for consumers that compromises LMI and minority populations. Think payday loans, installment loans, car title loans. This, these industries are going to boom in the coming couple of years. Private business loans, these industries without doubt are going to explode because it's gonna get much harder to get access to capital from banks. The CBA also raised concern over the lack of information provided by the regulatory agencies regarding the impact of changes would have on consumers given the magnitude of the proposal cha proposed changes. In its cover letter, the regulator of the CBA provides a list of proposed changes based on the three-engine proposal that could help balance interest. Well, let's see about how, how these proposals come about. What I believe is going to likely happen here is we're going to see a lot more change coming. And this is, you know, Janet Yellen has been kind of planting this seed, letting everybody know that, you know, banks are about to go through a big change. So there might be a potentially be more bank mergers this year due to higher interest rates and the recent regional bank turmoil, which is making more expensive for them to keep depositors. And then she said this time and time again, June 13th, May, uh, again, June, June, May. Uh, she said this several, several times. And she even said, she told bank CEOs to uh, prepare for you know, mergers. Mergers may be necessary. And that's why you had Jake Morgan Chase taking on that merger. And they're able to, one thing that many people don't realize is that in a period of distress, banks, they're allowed to, they're allowed to begin to acquire a lot of these other banks. Right now, if you have a bank that has more than 10% market share, it's, un, they're unlawful, they're, it's unlawful for them to be able to acquire another bank because they're not allowed to have a monopoly. But if that bank is in distress, they have a legal ability to where they can go out there and start to buy these banks and take on those consumers that that failed bank has acquired. So these banks are able to build out a monopoly so long as a, a bunch of other banks fail, which I believe we're walking into right now. I mean, when you look at the losses that these big banks have suffered because of this new regulation. You can see clearly where the regional banks are at, where the credit unions are at. So the assessment also reduced earnings of Bank of America by 40%. Think about how much money Bank of America has gotten their hands on due to the Silicon Valley bank collapse. All that fear was a gift for them. And their earnings dropped 40%. Wells Fargo's dropped 36%. Citigroup, they're restructuring and, uh, they're firing 20,000 new employees, and, and that, that's a $1.8 billion with their assessment, right? What bank investors should watch out for next? We should watch out for, the, for these regional banks. I'm telling you, a really, really big problem is coming. The FDIC actually had a video out talking about the idea of bank runs. Am I saying it's going to happen here in America? No, but I don't think the pain is anywhere near over. In fact, I think the pain is ahead of us. And the more banking relationships you have, the better off you're going to be. The more uh, lending relationships you have, the better off you're going to be. Because I believe what we're going to start to see here are some banks that are going to be a little bit more flexible than others and other banks that are simply going to just cut credit entirely. So if you have, let's say, one credit card right now, it might be wise to have a second or a third. You don't have to use it. You don't have to max it out and be irresponsible. But having these different relationships could be a really, really big gift down the road. What do you think about this entire situation? Do you think that when you look at New York Community Bank Corp stock dropping 45% overnight, and you start to look at how they are rewriting bank laws, that's what they're doing. They're literally rewriting bank laws to where they're gonna be able to go through their loans and they're gonna be forcing them to realize some of these losses. And they're gonna tell banks how they can lend money when they can lend money, what is safe, what is not safe. It's essentially taking over the banks. That's what's happened with Basel 3 Endgame. Drop below. Let's have a conversation about this. I believe it's going to be one of the greatest wealth transfers of all time. I think that's what we're walking into. Started in 2020. It's ramping up now. Next couple of years, we're going to see things in this country that most people won't believe. 
Let's have a conversation about this. If you'd like to fix your credit to position yourself for funding, it's going to get harder to get funding. So if you have bad credit or even average credit, and you have big goals, it's going to get much harder for you to achieve those goals if you're looking to get funding and, uh, and you're approaching that with a 500 or 600 or low 700 credit score. So if you have credit issues, we'd love to help and give you a free strategy session at greatcreditfast.com. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge-offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, or any negative item on your credit report, go to greatcreditfast.com. Click the link in the description just below this video. Schedule a free strategy session. Catch you in the next video.